The peace of the Lord be with you, and good morning. This is our devotion for Thursday, February 2nd, and uh, here we are at Psalm Day. So, our psalm for this week is Psalm 112, verses 1 through 9, and uh, beginning this out in the morning, so we'll follow the morning order, page 295 in the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. Let us pray. Blessed God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you. Um, we know that you bless the one who fears you and greatly delights in your commandments. We ask that we would be those who fear you and greatly delight in your commandments. Um, we thank you for the promises of your blessings, uh, that, um, that the offspring of those who, who have this fear would be mighty in the land, that their generation, uh, the that the generation of the upright would be blessed, that wealth and riches would be in their house and righteousness enduring forever, the light dawning upon the darkness for the upright uh, because of the grace, mercy, and righteousness. And it is well with the man who deals generously and conducts his affairs with justice. We pray that we would be those who do that, that, uh, that in your righteousness we would never be moved but remembered forever, and that we would not be afraid of bad news, trusting in you that we would have steady hearts, not being afraid, knowing that we will look upon our adversaries in triumph. Grant us to be generous, giving freely and distributing to the poor, knowing that in you our righteousness endures forever, and our horn will be exalted in honor. Bless us to know most of all that we have all of these things, not by our own goodness, but the righteousness that is yours, given to us in your Son, Jesus, as you live and reign one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Um, so as, as we, you know, gosh, this is, this is a, uh, a law and a gospel moment, right? Um, as we, we look at these things, we look at this uh, on the one hand in terms of the law, and on the other hand in, the, in terms of the gospel and the fulfillment of Christ. So uh, let's start with, with this in view of the law. Um, there is this blessing that the law speaks. These are all blessings that the law speaks, and if you do them, you will have them. That there is this, um, this, this. If, if you fear the Lord perfectly, if you delight in His commandments perfectly, uh, that there are all these things will be promised to you. You will have righteousness. You will have wealth and riches, and you will have uh, grace and mercy, and, and, and all of these things. Um, but there's also the component that Christ is the one who has done all of these things, and the only one. Who has done any of these things perfectly, right? That's the gospel. Christ has done these things perfectly, and um, so um, when it comes to the one who fears the Lord, Christ is the one who has feared the Lord perfectly. Christ is the one who delights in the commandments perfectly. Christ is the one whose offspring will be mighty in the land, in His kingdom, right? In His eternal kingdom, and the upright will be blessed, and that there will be wealth and riches, because what greater wealth and riches are there than those in the house of Christ, where righteousness endures forever? And um, so all of these things apply to Christ, that he is the one who, who um, is gracious, merciful, and righteous. He is the one with whom it is well, uh, who deals generously and lends, and con conducts his affairs in justice. He is the one who is never moved and remembered forever, who is not afraid of bad, bad news but trusts in the Lord, whose heart is steady and will not be afraid, and looks in triumph over his adversaries. Remember, we talked about oppression yesterday. We see the same thing here, that the adversaries are sin, death, and the devil, and he is the one who has triumphed over them in his righteousness, and he has distributed freely to us, the poor in spirit, right? Those who, who are impoverished in our own righteousness because his righteousness endures forever and his horn is exalted in honor. So all of that is Jesus. 
then there's the component where, as we are Christians, all of these things are ours. They are imputed to us. Um, you know, we're reading through through Job with my family right now, and there are all these things that Job says, and, 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 and you go, gosh, you know, if Job thinks of himself righteous of himself this is all wrong but what you understand is that job is, is he's speaking like this and this is this is the imputed righteousness of god to us and for us by faith where we realize that that we aren't righteous of ourselves but we are righteous in christ we have the righteousness of faith in christ and 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 we live in that righteousness and so this plays itself out, just like we've been talking about with the, the light and the salt in the world. This plays itself out with us living these lives that exhibit these things, grace and mercy and righteousness and generosity and, and, and steadfastness and, um, and trust and, and, and triumph over our adversaries of, of sin, death, and the devil. And, and so as we see this, there's this whole... This whole way that this fits in our lives. You know, there's the there's the law telling us that if you do this, you will live. There's the accusation of the law that tells us you haven't done this and you deserve to die. There's Christ who has fulfilled this for us. And there is that righteousness of Christ that is ours and truly is righteousness in which we live. Righteousness that manifests itself in our lives and by which we are then salt and light to the world. You know, this, this all... That's how law and gospel works, right? And when it comes to the righteousness that we have before God, we have heaven because Christ has done these things for us. We have righteousness before God by grace through faith in Christ, not of ourselves because our righteous deeds are like filthy rags. But when it comes to how we live in the world with our neighbors, now we relate to them by this love that God has given us. And these things show themselves out in that. Not not because we earn heaven by it. Not because we 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 do it to to um, to earn heaven. But we do this because this is what God wants. Because this is who God is, as the God who is love. And thanks be to God that He is that love, because in that He has loved us above all. Amen. All right. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.